You welcome back to the show. This is a pause here on Joy News with me, Elton Robey. Now we take you to the election headquarters because Matthew Poku Prempe, the Minister for Energy and Member of Parliament for Mencia South, is widely preferred among party members as a running mate to the, as a running mate to the MPP presidential candidate, Dr. Mama for the 2024 general election. That's the conclusion of a National Intelligence Bureau survey conducted nationwide, according to the report secured by Joy News. Dr. Prempe also known as NAPO, is a preferred choice, especially among constituency polling station executives who constitute the largest segment of the sample, corresponding to 36.2 and 32.6 respectively. On your screen now are the findings of the National Intelligence Bureau uh, uh, survey that they conducted uh, this month of June. Now, Dr. Uh, Dr. Matsupoku Pemper NAPO's preference stands at uh, 76 0.2%, uh, uh, followed keenly by, not really keen, I mean, if you want to look at his election, we'll see that it's a landslide victory. And then you have uh, Yao Osea Duchum, the Minister for Education, Member of Parliament for Bosomtri, also in the Ashanti region, 10.16%. Uh, there are others, I mean, all put together, uh, they, they make up 4.5% of the preference by the members of the party, about over 5,000 people sampled. Uh, Osei Chairman Sabonso, former Majority Leader, Member of Parliament for Swami, also in the Ashanti region, uh, also came with 3.38 percent. The other person is the current Chief of Staff, uh, Fremo Pare, 3.4 uh, percent. She's also from the Ashanti region, former MP. And of course, the first Deputy Speaker of Parliament, a Member of Parliament for Bekwai in the Ashanti region, Joseph Osei, with 2.27 percent. So this is the outcome. And of course, best pair for uh, Baumia. Napo versus Saduchu, and it's a landslide preference. 84.2% for Majapoku Prempe, also known as Napo, and of course 15.7% for the Education Minister, uh, Dr. Yao Osei Aduchu. And this is the outcome of a survey put together by the uh, National Intelligence Bureau. So, is a party uh, full soldiers or grassroots? Do they prefer a, a female to partner Dr. Baumia? Only 6% of them said yes. Now, overwhelming 94% said they want a male to partner Dr. Muhammad Obama. And this is coming from those sampled in this survey. 6% for uh, went in for a female person to partner the vice president. 94% said they want a male to partner the vice president. And so the preference, uh, they, they also asked the question about, so which region do you prefer that the running mate is selected from? 92.6% said they want the running mate to come from the Ashanti region. So the party is in agreement. The Ashanti region should produce the running mate for, uh, to partner Dr. Mohamed Bermia for election 2024. The Eastern region came second 1.84, Central 1.5, Greater Accra 1.4, Vota, all of them doing under 1% with the Upper West region. Uh, the last in the region sampled at 0.04%. Percent. So there's an overwhelming agreement within the MPP that a running mate should come from the Ashanti. No wonder the two leading, uh, Dr. Matipoku Prempe and Iyaw Osei Aduchum, all from the Ashanti region as members of parliament for Mencia South and Bosomti, respectively. So are these reliable you know, outcomes that the party should work with? Should the party stick with the findings put together by the, uh, the National Intelligence Bureau uh, and then work with it. Let me bring in somebody who knows this better. In fact, uh, the author of the book, Dr. Baumia, and the modern vice president of Ghana, Professor H.S.C. Kanku, joins me via phone. Professor, good afternoon. Welcome to the post. Uh, good afternoon, Elton. Thanks for having me. Right. So about three weeks ago, me and you had this discussion in the studio. We analyzed the, the chances. We did a sort of analysis of all those uh, that, in our estimation, were the front runners for the MPP uh, running mate slot. Now, per the findings put together or, or, or released by the National Intelligence Bureau, it is quite, in an election, in terms of the score, you will say that this is a landslide victory for Dr. Matteo Poku Prempe. And the conclusion the party executives came to is that Dr. Prempe popularity is due to his charisma, and uh, also the fact that he, uh, he's able to governize the base of the party. I mean, how much weight will you put on this findings by the Intelligence Bureau 
to inform the decision of the flag bearer to settle on the person they claim that the party rank and file are in for? Well, um, if you talk about how much weight, I mean, I, I'm not going to be discussing um, a lot of the um, methodological and other um, things associated with the operational um, side of the research because mm. um, it's something that has just come out and we're just digesting it. But if you're just talking um, from, from the perspective of uh, the narrative that it creates, you know, the buzz that it creates in, and whether this really uh, should feed into what the current vice president president, the presidential candidate of the NPP should be doing. Um, I, I mean, it definitely does increase the amount of attention that the um, energy minister, Dr. Matthew Opoko Prempe, is getting, and it, it keeps him within the conversation, but it also indicates uh, to some extent um, the popularity that he has within the party, and it's very important that when you're going into any election that you secure your base, um, it is the sure fire way you can make sure that you're getting a certain consolidated or assured amount of support. And if you don't have that, um, I mean, really, you ain't going nowhere. So um, that definitely is something to consider. Uh, the fact that he's well-liked within the party, the fact that his party credentials are bona fide, um, they run long and deep. Um, he's been a member of, of parliament for a long time. His, his political capital and his political credential um, are, are, are very deep and run for a, a long time within Ghana's political um, setting. So, so definitely the fact that he's going to be able to write, I mean, um, energize the base and a lot of people within the party identify with him mm. um, is, is a very good starting point. Right. And then they, they say that this survey targeted MPP delegates, including national regional constituency and polling station executives, utilizing the party's delegates album to ensure representative sample. The survey pulled 5,116 party executives. Should this be conclusive enough to say that, I mean, there's no need to even, even consider uh, the names. We should just go by what the party people think that uh, this is what they want. Yeah, I mean, if, if, we, if, if we, I mean, um, control for, for the research and um, the, the veracity of it, which we have no doubt about, and once that line has been crossed, and that's pretty a huge statement of support for, right. for the um, energy minister. Um, it, it's not close. It's an overwhelming uh, statement of approval and endorsement from, from the party base. And um, it shows two things. First of all, that he has a certain constituency within the party, that the number of people who owe allegiance to him within the party is, is quite huge. Um, and that he would not be perceived um, as somebody who is, quote-unquote, an, an outsider, so to speak. Mm. Um, and, and, and the legions and the stories of what um, Napo has done within the party are, are everywhere for, I mean, everyone to see and hear about. If you do the research, um, the youth within the party, the number of people he's nurtured in the party, um, the support that he's given to the party structures, he's really, really established himself as a party aficionado. Um, through the sort of um, commitment and and um, um, service that he's done to both the party and, and the government. So um, it, it is very important that there's a candidate who is selected, who is accepted, who is accepted within the party, because at the end of the day, um, you do want to consolidate your base, and that's the first point to start with, and then you get more. But, of course, there's a governance imperative, mm -hmm. and then there's, a, there's an electoral imperative to the vice presidency, but... Um, as far as securing the loyalty of the party is concerned, I think that's one thing that um, Dr. Baumia would be assured of when he selects him. But what, 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 what the, the candidature of Dr. Matthew Poku Pempa, would, would, would this candidature be accepted by the generality of the Ghanaian public, knowing very well that we're going to a general election, not an election for only MPP folks? Well, it's an important question. Um, he's not um, an... He's, he's not new within a political system. He's been a very, very... He's not a political neophyte, that's the word I'm looking for. Mm. I mean, he's been a very major, major feature within our national politics and within the national psyche. In fact, as somebody who was at the helm of affairs during one of the biggest policy decisions, one of the most consequential policy initiatives 
not just of the Kufuado administration, but in the history of this country, which is the free SHS, he was at the helm of it. So just think about it. Mm. In one of the most um, consequential, one of the most impactful, one of the most um, groundbreaking or one of the major policy decisions within this country in, in a sector that is very critical to the, the national development of this country. Mm. We all agree that education is, is, is the key, you know, to really turn this country around, especially for the youth. He was at the helm of affairs during one of the biggest policy initiatives in, in our country's history. And so within that, he cannot be taken away from the, the, when the history, the political um, story of both the Akutu administration and definitely of, of this country is just written. Mm. And to that extent, he is a major quantity, he is a major factor, um, and we all know that this was a trump card, a trump card policy of the current administration. Mm. They needed somebody who was a doer, somebody who was results-oriented, somebody who would be able to go on the ground and get something accomplished. And he did that. I, I, I do think that he, that is something that he brings to the table. Um, he moved from there and went to the energy ministry as well. Uh, but we can tell that through his administration, he's really been a very um, consensus-building figure. I mean, if you talk to the stakeholders within the education ministry, this particular policy would not have been implemented without a sort of consensus-building uh, that we, we, we needed uh, from, from a leader like that. So, um, yes, I mean, the jury is still out there as mm. to how the Ghanaian public will receive him, but I do not think that he's been a, a non-factor within our national politics. He's been a very major um, contributor to the education sector and to the country's political um, uh, narrative. Uh, but, but, Prof, opening him, him up to, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the public discussion and as a fact that he's had his own baptism of fire, especially in the energy sector. Recently, mm -hmm. I mean, he came under fire for suggesting that people should develop their own timetable if they have the view that the country is going through power crisis and Dumso, uh, is, uh, or, uh, Dumso was back. I mean, people took him to the cleaners. They were not happy with the way he responded to that question. They wanted him to show empathy, but whether they thought he was, he was showing a lot of arrogance in terms of dealing or responding to the issue of uh, you know, the crisis in the energy sector because everybody felt it. And this report even sums it up when it says that Dr. Pempe's current role as energy minister, the ongoing power crisis in Ghana would impact his candidacy. Therefore, the government may need to implement necessary measures to solidify his competence in managing the energy sector, thereby enhancing the party prospect in the 2024 general elections. And this morning, he was in parliament responding to the question whether we are in doom so or not. We'll bring that to our viewers. But clearly, if this is the only thing they were able to highlight, despite all his, his service, uh, his contribution to public service, then clearly the issue of energy is key. And his conduct, would it have any effect if he's selected to partner the vice president as he appeals to the generality of the public? Yeah, um, thank you very much, Elton. Um, yes, definitely uh, we do have a major, major, major conversation around energy in this country. Um, there are challenges within the sector. We are all experiencing it, and as the sector minister, it does put him in the bull's eye or puts him in, I mean, in the center of the discourse around that. Um, I mean, we should talk about the point given. I well, I mean, but they put it different. That um, yes, there are times that um, the conversation gets uh, partisan, and so maybe uh, it was that context. Uh, but uh, definitely, they will have. To be, I mean, he would have to come up with um, explanations regarding how this country is managing its energy sector, how they are making sure that there's energy self-sufficiency and that the current uh, problems with um, energy instability is addressed. I, I do think that um, he's mentioned or he's taken steps uh, to show or to demonstrate how these things are being addressed. And so um, once he's elected, it's something that would definitely uh, come up strongly in, in this campaign. But, but you know, um, one of the things that is definitely going to bring to the table is executive experience. Um, when you're looking for a vice president, what you want is a vice president who has just executive experience, um, or not just intelligence or competency, but that this is somebody who has 
executive experience as well. Um, it is very conversant with problems experiencing, um, knows what the problems are, and has a very good lay, I mean, view of the, I mean, um, lay land view, a, a broad view of what really the, the issues are with, within the country. And he has been at the center of making sure that um, those issues are being solved. And so I think that when you're looking for a VP, you do want somebody who will be able to step into your shoes and on day one and be able to hit the ground running. And if you look at that, that imperative, I mean, that's something that you could say that um, he, he definitely would be able to bring to the table. He does exhibit some of the same qualities that the current VP has in terms of both of them being results-oriented and go get it. And I, I do think that that's something that we can associate with him. Hopefully, um, he brings us to the next three and uh, probably as VP candidate as well. Uh, few, few, j j just two issues so that I can let you go, Professor uh, H H H The overwhelming majority of respondents, 92.2%, believe that the running mate should come or should be selected from the Ashanti region, widely regarded as the party's stronghold. I mean, with this at the back of the presidential candidate's mind, it will appear to me that even if somebody is more qualified, more popular, more appealing, once you don't come from the Ashanti region, you are out of there. The selection race. <laughs> well, I mean, um, LT, you've got to remember that before you get into government, you need to be elected first. So definitely, there's going to be a, 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 an electoral permutation or a, 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 an electoral dynamic to it. Listen, at the end of the day, this thing is about numbers. Mm. Okay? And so every candidate is going to have their eye on the ball to make sure that they get the candidate who is going to give them the best possible return in terms of the numbers. Mm. And if you look at that and you, you see the research and you see the numbers, then ob obviously you, you are looking at somebody who is going to be able to churn out those numbers and give you the figures in order to, for you to cross the finishing line before you even begin talking about, about governance. Mm. So I, I just think that it's, it's, it's a double... It's, it's a double... Um, it's a double uh, advantage for him that first of all he he does have the political the, the legislative and the executive ex experience um, to be able to step into the shoes uh, but in addition to that there is that double advantage of the fact that he, he i mean we don't need to belabor the point he comes from the stronghold of the region he is uh he's a skion of the ashanti royal tradition mm. and in terms of that there's a lot of affinity that people from the stronghold in the Ashanti region have towards him. That's definitely a huge advantage that he brings to the table in terms of the electoral advantage. So, I mean, it's something that we definitely cannot ignore. And maybe that, 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 that works to, 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 to the advantage of the candidate as well, selecting somebody from, from their stronghold. And my final question will be, uh, preferred gender of running mates, 94% uh, says that they are in for a male running mate. Only 6% settled for a female running mate. It looks like in the MPP, they are in no mood for a female to become a running mate anytime soon. Is it a case well, that uh, no female has, you know, you know, graduated to that level yet? Well, I wouldn't say so. I do think that we've come a long way in our democracy. Um, since 1992, we've seen a lot of changes and a lot of groundswell, watershed moments, I should say, as far as female political leadership is concerned. And um, we've had chief justices, um, um, female chief justices. We have an, uh, a presidential, vice presidential candidate uh, from the position party. We've seen uh, many um, women take those leadership positions. And, and I, I, I do think that those strides are being made. I mean, it will be nice to see a lot more of it um, because of the inspiration that it provides. Uh, but then at the end of the day, it, it's just one of those dynamics. Because you see, there's, there's a lot of intersectionality when it comes to the selection of the VP. It's not just one thing that you, you focus your, your, your sight on. It, it's not monolithic in that sense. Um, there is, there is um, a lot of balance, in, uh, intersectional balances that have to be made. Um, and so at the end of the day, you, you want to make sure that while um, you want to provide that inspiration at the same time to you're not just being one dimensional in the selection. So um, I'm, sure, I'm sure that time will come out, there will be other avenues to be able to demonstrate that, that sort of empowerment. But at this point, it, it just looks like the winds are pointing towards a particular direction. Right, Prof, thank you very much for your time this afternoon, Professor 
HSC Kanku is a political communication expert. He's also the author of the book, Dr. Baumia, and the modern vice president of, Go of Ghana. And we're we'll looking at the outcome of a survey conducted by the National Intelligence Bureau that put uh, Dr. Uh, Matthew Poku Prempe ahead of everybody uh, in the race to become the running mate to uh, uh, Dr. Baumia, who is the MPP's flag bearer for election 2024. We understand that the party campaign team is currently meeting. There are information we are picking that the announcement could, could, could come anytime soon because there appears to be some agreement regarding the, the, the person to partner Dr. Baumia. And if the National Intelligence Bureau uh, outcome is anything to go by, then the announcement will be made and the name that will be mentioned clearly will be the Energy Minister, Dr. Matthew Opoku. But we're keeping an eye on this space and we'll bring you more as the unfold. But let's move away.